Hi, everyone. Welcome to Both Sides of the Story. I'm your host, Alan Janay from CBS4. Thanks for joining us. Tonight is our Consolation Bracket Championship match. Students from Denver East High School in Denver and Holy Family High School in Broomfield battle it out. Let's meet our participants to get things going. First up, Graham Cummings. He's a senior from Denver East High. Let's see his story. My name is Graham Cummings. I'm a senior and I go to East High School. Speech and debate kind of drew me in because part of me is competitive and just likes to do well at things and win tournaments is a big thing. And then also just academic part of it that you can be competitive in a way that's not the usual route of sports. Skills of communicating and researching are super important. They'll help me in whatever I choose to do in the future. Graham works incredibly hard. He's a quiet leader. He wants everybody in the room to feel like they belong there. Anytime he does a round, he comes and asks questions, he shares information, and then he takes that back to the team and really tries to foster relationships with everybody and is just such a natural leader. The advice I would give to people that are new into speech and debate is that it's going to be hard and you're going to hate every part of it for the first year or two and that there will be a lot of losses and a lot of people that will be better than you, but you will see improvement if you, if you keep trying. All right, you've met Graham. Jaden Renan is a senior from Holy Family High School. Let's meet Jaden. My name is Jaden Renan. I am currently a senior at Holy Family High School. Debate has allowed me to grow into more of a research, thoughtful person. It's allowed me to become a better speaker. I like to research a lot and just employ as many arguments as I possibly can and just try to find where everything connects. Just a day in my life outside of school, I play tennis. I play for Silver Creek High School. I'm very involved in Civil Air Patrol, which is a, one of our uh, community organizations. Jaden was selected for both sides of the story because he is an excellent leader. First of all, he is our debate captain here at Holy Family. Jaden might seem quiet when you first meet him and reserved, but really he is very interesting, well-read, funny, and a really great communicator who is compassionate to other people. What inspires me is my goals, ambitions in life. I want to attend Service Academy and then serve in the military as an officer. All right, you have met our two competitors. Also joining us is our illustrious panel of experts who will offer their analysis of our debate. They are Dominic Dizzuti, host of Colorado Inside Out, the weekly roundtable program here on PBS 12. And he is joined by Marianne Goodland on the right, chief legislative reporter with Colorado Politics, and Eric Sonderman, political analyst and columnist for the Gazette and Colorado Politics as well. Let's set our ground rules right now. Each side will present present their case. They'll ask each other questions. They'll have a chance to offer rebuttals as well. Both students have prepared a pro and con case for tonight's debate. They won't know which side they'll defend until we have a coin flip right here in our studio. When it is finished, we go back to our illustrious panel for questions and find out whom they felt offered the best arguments. So let's get started. Here is the issue up for debate this evening. Should the United States government regulate social media platforms. It's a big one. We'll have our coin flip and we'll get things underway. Graham, I'll let you make the call on this. Heads or tails? I'll take tails. Heads it is, and so I'm going to go to Jaden. What would you like? I'll opponent, take the affirmative. Name? Go ahead. I'm sorry. I stopped uh, I'll on. take the affirmative. You'll take the affirmative. That means you go first. Jaden, three minutes for your opening arguments. Go for it. I affirm the resolution. The United States government should regulate social media platforms. Social media is quickly becoming one of the largest sources of information and entertainment in the United States, with 73% of the population using it, according to Pew Research in 2021. We need government regulation in order to ensure safety, security, and free communication in our country. The first reason the government should regulate social media platforms is in order to ensure consumer security and privacy. One of the latest developments in the cyber world are advanced social media algorithms that deliver content based on the likelihood a user will engage with it. The Institute for the Internet and Just Society stated in 2021, quote, algorithms make use of sensitive data such as the location of the user, the friends they interact with, and the pages they search for, end quote. This poses the issue of privacy threats, specifically regarding how social media platforms use that sensitive information. Regulations will allow us to standardize how platforms collect and use such data, as each platform has different means of curating content. 
This standardized approach will create a safer, more transparent user experience and better equip the government to handle national security threats. In fact, this is something that other nations are already doing, such as the European Union's General Data Protection Regulation, which imposes strict rules as to how companies can use personal data. The United States should follow this approach. The second reason the government should regulate social media platforms is in order to uphold freedom of speech and our democratic values. When we think of regulation, we often think of censorships or restrictions on what a platform can have. However, regulations can be used to uphold freedom of speech. Because social media companies are private entities, they have control over what is published on their platform and remove content depending on their rules. Government regulations will allow these rules to be standardized, unambiguous, and designed to ensure freedom of speech. This is actually something that social media companies currently advocate for. According to a 2019 Washington Post article written by Mark Zuckerberg, quote, I believe we need a more active role for governments and regulators. By updating the rules for the internet, we can preserve what's best about it, the freedom for people to express themselves and for entrepreneurs to build new things, while also protecting society from broader harms, end quote. This is the founder and CEO of the largest social media platform advocating for increased formal regulations. Government input effectively gives us a path to reinforcing our democratic values in the virtual world. Finally, it is important to understand that the United States government already imposes regulations on social media. We monitor sites in order to find and remove illegal content such as copyright material or child pornography and should continue to do so. We need to have regulations in order to mitigate privacy breaches, uphold our democratic values, and remove illegal or obscene content. For these reasons, I strongly affirm the resolution and believe the United States government should regulate social media platforms. Jaden, thank you very much. Jaden Renan in the affirmative, affirmative Graham Cummings in the negative. And Graham, you now have two minutes for questions and cross-examination. Go ahead. All right, so I'd like to start on your first, first point about consumer security. You mentioned that all these algorithms are really bad for privacy and for the security of consumers, but then in your contention three, you talk about how uh, these algorithms can be used to stop terrorism, to stop like illicit posts on social media. So would you not argue that algorithm, algorithms are actually a good thing? So that's not what I was mentioning in algorithms. So in that third contention there where I'm talking about uh, like uh, illicit content, that's a government regulation that we impose on social media companies where the government is actively regulating those and removing things such as child pornography and net illegal things for society. What I'm talking about in that first contention there is where algorithms are using people's sensitive information and we don't necessarily have any transparent view on how companies do that. Therefore, regulations are going to open up that standpoint and allow the government to be better equipped to handle threats that come out of that. Okay, on your second point about freedom of speech, you mentioned how the government could censor certain types of, or, um, that freedom of speech is helped with regulations because it allows for more speech. But if the government can decide what can and cannot be posted on social media, wouldn't you argue that it actually hurts freedom of speech in the U.S.? Absolutely not, because there's a key point in that. It's that the government is not actually regulating it. What we're doing is we're going to be helping social media companies and their teams, because those social media company teams, such as Mark Zuckerberg's quote, they might not be robust enough to actively handle what's going on in their platforms. And if we get government regulation, we can see some bipartisan input. We can see a more effective solution. And overall, this is something that social media companies want in their platforms. So at the core, the sites themselves will still be doing the regulation? Yeah, so the government, the uh, social media platforms are going to be using government input and government teams along with themselves in order to achieve the goals set out by the government and those social media platforms uh, rules. Okay, and then on your third point again about current regulations, do you think that current regulations are enough in the status quo to where we don't need more? No, I don't think so. And I think we should still maintain our current uh, advocation or our current um, regulations against child pornography and illegal material. We need a little bit more regulation in order to increase the transparency. All right, let's hold up right there on the questions. The questions are over. You have heard the affirmative now from Jaden Graham. You now have three minutes in the negative on the concept of should the United States government regulate social media platforms. Go ahead. I negate the resolution. The United States government should regulate social media platforms. My first contention is that regulations would be ineffective. In the status quo, the federal government does not have the power to adequately regulate speech online. In 2019, John Zamples of the Cato Institute found that social media companies are largely immune from government regulation as regulation would pass under the strict scrutiny test that courts apply to restrictions of fundamental rights. Preventing the harms caused by fake news and hate speech have a common weakness. If we don't know what a term means, we cannot know how it applies. 
Thus, vagueness fosters unconstitutionality. This opinion is corroborated by Daniel Ortner of The Hill when he states that because social media companies are private companies, not government actors, these companies have their own First Amendment right to exclude anyone from their platforms for any reason at all. The government cannot force these companies to open up their sites and associate with viewpoints that their owners and shareholders find objectionable. It is infeasible for the government to implement any effective policy without expanding its powers to an unconstitutional level. For this reason, any legislation passed by the federal government would only have minimal effects on online communications. My contention, too, is that self-regulation solves. With the government unable to provide suitable regulation, the most effective solution to issues online is for social media platforms to regulate themselves. In fact, we have already seen these platforms use their powers to limit harmful posts and accounts involving illicit content and terrorism. In 16, Twitter alone reportedly suspended an additional 250,000 accounts for violating policies related to the promotion of terrorism in just six months. This brings their overall number of suspensions to 360,000 since the middle of 2015. Social media platforms have proven themselves to be extremely dedicated to removing detrimental speech on their platforms, and critically, they can reach much, react much faster than the government would be able to. A study by the Information Technology and Innovation Foundation found that rulemaking, monitoring, and enforcement processes can all also be faster using self-regulation rather than government regulation, which means that consumers are protected sooner. As opposed to federal regulation that would be slow and weak, self-regulation has the power to keep up with rapidly changing issues. Contention three is that federal regulation would reduce innovation in the tech center. Federal legislation that mandates strict regulation would create massive costs for tech companies, thus making it very har hard for small companies to rise. Clyde Wayne of Forbes describes that existing social media firms want rules that they can live with which can too easily translate into rules that future social networks cannot live with. Government cannot create new competitors, but it can easily prevent their emergence by imposing barriers to entry to, to market entry. Essentially, regulation designed to affect large social media platforms will put those costs onto any new actors in the tech space. Tech startups must be prioritized as a study by uni of study by University of Nevada professor Mary Blankenship finds that technology-based startups account for 3.8% account for of total firms in the United States and employ 3.6% of the workforce. They provide jobs that have higher wages and create jobs in, sect in sectors outside of their own. A single technology-based job can create another five jobs in other industries. We will see the loss of these benefits if federal regulations were to impose massive costs on small tech startups, and for those reasons, I negate. Graham, thank you very much. Jaden, now your opportunity for two minutes of questions and cross-examination. Go ahead. Sounds good, thank you. So I want to start off with your first contention there that regulations are going to be ineffective. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, can you elaborate on just how regulations are going to be so ineffective in uh, handling social media problems? Yeah, so we've seen with past attempts to regulate social media that it's almost impossible for anything to pass through the House and the Senate because of the vague unconstitutionality within the idea of regulating speech online. Even if there are detrimental side effects that we have seen, it's super hard for anything for any uh, politicians to pass any bills because of that risk. Okay, do you think it's important to uh, maintain freedom of speech in the internet? I would say it's important to maintain freedom of speech. Uh, and do you think that, for, that private companies can adequately do that if they don't have government input? I think they definitely can. We've already seen that happening. As I mentioned, in 2016 alone, Twitter banned 360,000 terrorist accounts. That's just one example of how it doesn't have to go so far as banning people within America that may have controversial opinions, but they're actively taking down posts that can be harmful or that display illicit actions through their algorithms and the Okay, thank well. you. So uh, moving on to that second contentions, on that second contention where uh, social media platforms should regulate themselves. If this truly was a good option, then why would companies like Facebook and that Washington Post article advocate for increased in government input. Yeah, so that's super important. It ties directly into my third point that the only reason that these large companies are advocating for regulation is because they want to kill the chances of other com companies coming up and competing with them and taking their massive shares within the technology sector. We've seen this with companies like Facebook and Twitter buying out smaller companies that they fear are competing with them just so that they can maintain their competitive advantage. So what we're seeing is that f Facebook knows that they can afford to have these uh, regulations put on them, but other smaller companies can't, so that leaves them either either to uh, like drop out of the market and shut down their company or to be bought out by larger companies. So I'm so glad you brought that up. So wouldn't regulations, like, like we do on real businesses in the real world, leave it uh, or allow for um, these overtaking, these mon monopolistic companies such as Facebook to not stifle competition independently? 
Sure, you could argue that there would be specified clauses in there that would allow for that, but the fundamental ideas of regulations allows for that, uh, those companies to have increased costs. All right, we'll have to wrap up the questions right there. We're talking about whether government should regulate social media platforms. Jaden, in the affirmative, now two minutes for a bottle. Go. So I really want to start off with my opponent's first contention in this, that regulations are ineffective. So this is going to be extremely important in this case because social media platforms are being continually used as uh, means to start political protest, start political means, and, camp and uh, politicians campaign on these platforms as well. In fact, the Congressional Research Service in 2019 stated, quote, the Supreme Court has recognized the internet as a critical form for expression of free speech, end quote. So what we need is government regulations in order to ensure that these social media companies Companies can't unilaterally exclude people and they don't have may not have enough input to effectively deal with what might be political or advertising or terrorist groups or stuff like that. So that's why we need that government regulation in order to uh, make sure that these uh, platforms and people campaigning on social media are allowed to do so. So that's why we need to use government regulation and we can see it's actually going to achieve free speech better than if we just allow um, for uh, social media companies to go unregulated. So moving on to my opponent's second contention. Uh, again, why would companies like Facebook advocate for increased government regulations if they could regulate themselves? So my opponent's stating that this will lead to a uh, massive federal regulation where the federal government is going to be specifically picking out individual posts. However, this is not true. As seen in my second contention, we're going to be working with social media companies in order to achieve the just goals outlined by the government and by the social media companies. What we're doing is setting a baseline standard for social media companies to follow. And what this is going to do is create a more safer, more transparent virtual environment. And then moving on to my opponent's third contention that this will stifle competition. The fact is, is that regulations in themselves are actually gonna do the opposite way. As we see like Facebook, as my opponent mentioned, buying out the competition, this is stifling the competition in and of itself. And we have regulations in the first place in order to mitigate this from happening. We see it in the real world. Let's take any business from the progressive or gilded age. Therefore, we need reg regulations in order to make this impact true. On both sides this evening, you're watching two of the top high school debaters in the state talk about social media. Graham in the negative. Three minutes to respond and close now. Go ahead. So I'd like to start on the top of his case where he talks, talks about secu uh, consumer security. The most important thing here is that consumers are already be per being protected on social media sites. Even if this means that data goes towards these companies, that data feeds algorithms that can then take illicit posts um, or like hostile actors off of these sites. I give you my example from Twitter in 2016 where they took 360,000 terrorist uh, accounts off of Twitter. That is the most important thing you're going to be looking at when prioritizing the security of the these users is if they're expo exposed to this harmful content. Next, to moving on to a second contention about freedom of speech. This also applies to my first point, but what we're seeing here is that uh, there's actually competition within the market for these companies to be more invested in protecting freedom of speech. What we saw after January 6th with Twitter and Facebook is that a lot of right-leaning people moved off of these platforms because they believed that they were not representing their values. So we're seeing that these companies are actually going to be losing consumers if they uh, take too hard of a stance on any one topic, and they see that as a competitive disadvantage. So they will obviously be smart about what and where they are regulating certain people or things. And then on his last point about current regulations working, there's something, there's a double bind here. When his first contention, he's saying that algorithms are bad because they're leaking our data. But then he goes on to say how they're a good thing and they can protect consumers by um, uh, like making sure they aren't exposed to obscene content or to child pornography. But if those algorithms are working this well, then that means that we cannot change data uh, collecting methods within these companies. And even with that, the government itself cannot decide how these companies are going to be um, presenting this data or how they're going to be regulating because that is fundamentally unconstitutional for the government to tell a private business who and what can use their platform. That moves directly into my first point about how me, uh, social media regulations would be completely ineffective because the terms that we are describing, such as hate speech, or, um, are extremely vague and thus they can't be Decide, uh, assigned to any one set value or any type of post, meaning that it is all in the opinion of either the government or private companies. And if the government was to decide that a certain opinion should not be allowed on these platforms, that is fundamentally unconstitutional. And for that reason, they can only Im impose weak laws. But that moves on to my second point, that if the government can only use weak laws, that leaves social media companies to be the only ones to regulate themselves. As I said, they have a competitive advantage if they are able to take off obscene posts, but leave freedom of speech on their platform. 
Next, moving on to the, my last point about innovation, if we are to put these harsh regulations on, as he is saying, such as like making these companies uh, like talk with the government and have these strict guidelines on what can and cannot be posted, we're going to see that new companies have to implement that, that technology into their platforms, which they simply cannot afford to do. That means there's massive amounts of loss of innovation within the technology industry as these, as these new companies fail. Graham Cummings, thank you very much. Jaden Renan, one minute for your close. Go ahead. Thank you so much. So I wanted to start out with just a, uh, one misconception. My opponent states that in my third contention where I talk about illegal material, I'm advocating for uh, algorithms. That's not the case. I talk about algorithms in my first contention and how government regulations will allow these more be more transparent. And in the third contention, I'm talking about regulations that we already have in place that do not involve algorithms. So with that being said, this debate really boiled down to two things. One, the role of government, and two, the impacts of regulations. So to start with the role of government, governments ought to protect citizens' rights and they can do that through regulating social media. Again, this upholds freedom of speech in a greater degree if we have regulations on companies. Again, why would companies like Facebook want these if they uh, couldn't handle the issues on their own? And then moving on to that second point, the impacts of regulation. Uh, my opponent mentioned the January 6th impacts with political involvement on social media. Regulations will allow for multi-political involvement and allow for people to not be so polarized in their social media usage. And then finally, businesses in the real world are regulated in order to ensure the impact of non-stifling competitors. So therefore, this is going to flow to the affirmative. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Spirited debate. Let's go to our illustrious panel and get their thoughts on what they saw. Dominic? Jaden and Graham, you uh, both are embarking on a debate that has been debated internationally with various countries, various governments. Uh, you both have done a remarkable job. I think any of the people debating this on a larger uh, realm would be very lucky to have either one of you involved. But you know the debate is not over. Now we have questions from our panel. Eric, why don't we start with you with your question for Jaden? Sure. Uh, Jaden, I think at the very end of uh, your, uh, your close there, you used the word polarized. It's no secret that the polarization in our country and our government is ramping up. Don't you run the risk by having government regulation of social media that it yings and yangs, depending on which party is in power, specifically, would you have wanted the Trump administration in the run-up to the last election, in the aftermath of the last election, to be in charge of that regulation of social media? Um, that's a, absolutely, it's a great question. So the thing is, is that the government creates independent regulation committees all the time. And that's what we would ought to do if we were going to impose more regulations on social media. This shouldn't be a political thing because that's why regulations, we should impose them in the first place. To make this non-political and to create and to keep uh, private companies from kind of displaying their own values instead. So what this is going to allow us to do is it's going to lead to more bipolitical uh, participation. And again, we just need to create these independent uh, regulatory committees. Marianne, your turn. Your question for Jaden. Thanks very much. Great job, guys. Um, Jaden, my question for you is what about um, the fact that these, these companies are not just here in the United States. These are international, global uh, competitors here. How, how would you handle the international aspects of this, for con particularly for countries that don't have the same kinds of freedom of speech um, regulations that we have? Yeah, absolutely. So this is really going to be, again, we can center this down to either the United States is, regula is regulating in order to uphold our own values, and then we can communicate with other regulations such as the European Union in order to create a standard for security and transparency among these social media companies. Again, I did mention that the European Union is already creating some of these strict rules. So regulations are already happening. They're happening across the world. And we ought to be a part of this in order to make sure that our values do make it into these worldwide regulations. Graham, it's your turn to face the panel. Eric, your question for Graham. Yeah, good stuff, both of you. Uh, Graham, I think the status quo we have now would be defined as largely your position, which is self-regulation or very, very light regulation. How do you make the case that that self or light regulation is working, particularly in a situation where by late, late polling, 65% of Republicans a year after the election think that the election was stolen from Donald Trump when that is factually just not clear. That is fed by social media. How do you defend the light or self-regulation we have now? 
Yeah, so I think it's super important that social media companies have to adapt to these issues as they are presented. So we saw when uh, vaccine misinformation and mis misinformation about the election was rising, we saw these companies start to crack down and put warning flags under posts that may not have been accurate pertaining to that information. So we can see that as technology advances, as the algorithms become more complex and they gather more data, there's going to be more um, complex ways of like making sure that all the content on that site is correct and that it all still falls within freedom of speech, but in a way that isn't harmful. Marianne, your question for Graham. Hi, Graham. Um, great job. Uh, what about the, the argument about content? Should social media companies have be able to decide what content is appropriate for their sites? I think that, first of all, as a private company, they are constitutionally obligated to have that ability to decide what they should decide. But because of the larger role they play in our society, it does become a bit more complicated. But again, as I mentioned in my closing statements, that they have a, um, they get an advantage if they are keeping more users on their site. So they're obviously not going to become completely to one side or the other. They're going to want to foster that conversation in order to have more users, users and have more engagement. Alan, as you can see, uh, both Jaden and Graham have done a great job rising to the occasion to tackle this global issue. Uh, now it's our job to rise to the occasion and somehow pick a winner. <laughs> I'd be willing to leave it up to them to decide the entire issue permanently. We're going to give our panel a moment to consider whom they felt won this debate. That gives me a moment to let you know that next week we're going to conclude the 2021 Both Sides of the Story Tournament with our Winners Bracket Championship. Now, Kalina Kulig from George Washington and Masha Osovskaya from Cherry Creek High School will compete to become our 2021 champ. Don't miss that one. All right, panel, let's have a decision. Well, first and foremost, uh, Jaden Ingram, you both did a fantastic job. Thank you for what you provide in this debate. We have to do our job and somehow pick a winner. When we went through it, when we looked at how the answers to questions, both in cross-examination and from the judges, uh, Jaden, we decided that you are our Constellation Bracket champion. Congratulations. You both did a fantastic job, but Jaden, congratulations on a wonderful debate. All right, Jaden, congratulations. Well done. You are the 2021 champion of our consolation bracket here and really a terrific debate on a very complicated, difficult issue. It's great to hear it without political bias in it. Both of you ought to be proud for a terrific job. And that's all the time we have for our program tonight. We do want to thank our excellent students as well as our illustrious judging panel. And I want to thank you for tuning in. It is the support of viewers like you and our sponsors that helps to make this show a reality. Remember, you can catch up on past episodes of this program at pbs12.org, and you can catch me on CBS4 for all of the latest news and information that impacts our state of Colorado. For everyone here at PBS12, I'm Alan Janay. Thanks for watching, and that is Both Sides of the Story. <laughs>